Want to know how Canada's top entrepreneurs think about creating significant wealth? Join me, Thane Stenner, founder of Stenner Wealth Partners at CG Wealth Management and host of the Smart Wealth Podcast. Download today at iHeartRadio or your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe now. Hello, everyone. I'm Thane Stenner, the host of the BNM Bloomberg Smart Wealth Podcast. This is where I get the opportunity and privilege to interview some incredibly successful entrepreneurs and thought leaders from different sectors from around the world. Today, I have one of uh, such guests, uh, Mr. Ryan Beatty. I shouldn't say Mr. because I don't want to you know, have you feel uh, too much older there, Ryan. But uh, welcome. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Great to be here, Thane. Thank you so much. So what I'll do is I'll I'll give a brief bio um, of Ryan. Um, he's had many accomplishments so far in in his career, in his life, and uh, you'll see that um, he still I think got a lot more to to do and accomplish. So uh, bear with me. I'll, I'll kind of go through his his bio here, and then we'll get right into the questions of the interview. He was born and raised uh, in Burnaby, British Columbia, and he's the president of BD one of Western Canada's largest industrial and residential development companies. Uh, and my understanding actually is the organization has expanded out into the Toronto, Ontario area, also in the industrial space in the last three, four years. So <clears throat> it doesn't surprise me that uh, he's continuing to expand uh, the, the successful footprint of the company. For as uh, accomplished as Ryan is on the business front, what's impressed me uh the most about him is how he and his family have been very significantly involved and committed and passionate about the communities by with which they live and work uh, with their enterprise. So just to give you some context, and this is with permission, but uh, you know, Ryan has contributed personally nearly $125 million to 350 different organizations, including, you know, Simon Fraser University, Ronald McDonald House. BC Children's Hospital, YWCA in Vancouver, and the One Campaign, which is an interesting uh, group that's fighting poverty around the world and where he sits on its global leadership council. Uh, Ryan's you know, launched and developed a number of different um, uh, groups via his company, but also uh, personally with his wife, Cindy, and they uh, they're very active, uh, kind of a power couple here in the in the Western Canada uh, realm. So, again, uh, I know she's going to be listening to this at some point, uh, Cindy. So, uh, let's have some fun with you know with your husband here and see what we can kind of uh, draw out of him today. One one of his recent uh, uh, awards was uh, the Order of British Columbia, which basically is recognizing Ryan's dedication to community support and and philanthropy. But I'll touch upon a few other things. Uh, Ryan and his wife, Cindy, have also been recognized for the philanthropic support of the CKNW Kids Fund for Children in Need in the, here in the Lower Mainland. Uh, they've developed BD Cares, which is an employee-driven volunteer program in which all BD employees are invited to give back to their communities, which I think is a very uh, culturally smart thing to do and and. You know, he's, he's putting his principles in action. So uh, very good. He and his wife are also avid concert goers, which I think you'll find out more in this interview. Uh, and they've hosted BD Rocks at the Malkin Bowl in Stanley Park since 2016. And this uh, is attended by, you know, at least 2,500 people each summer uh, for those that are kind of corp uh, close to them corporately and personally. So I'm I'm uh, looking forward to kind of attending that here soon myself. Um Ryan sits on the board of the Fraser Institute, as well as the board of Artemis Gold, and has been a member of YPO, uh, YPO Gold and YPO CEO since 2001. So he's a he's an active, lifelong learner, I can tell by uh, being involved with that organization. He's also earned many awards and accomplishments, and I, I'm, I'm not going to do full justice here, but you know things like the CEO of the Year Award for the large company category, uh, business in Vancouver in 2021, the Order of British Columbia, like I mentioned, in 2020, um, and, and on and on, including the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal in 2012, uh, business in Vancouver, top 40 under 40 uh, from 2004, as well as the Ernst & Young Pacific 
Region Entrepreneur of the Year in 2009. So many accomplishments so far. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to this interview very much, Ryan. So thank you once again for kind of being with us here today. Thank you. So let's jump right in, shall we? Um, you know, let, let's just begin with, you know, out of all the accomplishments as, as a family, you know, your dad, Keith, I, I think he started the the original the company back in 1953 if i'm not mistaken yeah, 1954 54. He, he, he would say that i started a business in 1946 is like 1954 is the date of incorporation so gotcha. that's what i actually count as the anniversary date so gotcha. yes. excellent excellent so what would you say your family's you know the one or two things that you're most proud of so far uh that 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 you've been able to accomplish as a family and individually so far uh, it's a great, great question. You know, I think the greatest accomplishment is the uh, duration, uh, length and quality of positive relationships. You know, we're about loyalty and long term. We had employees that were over 52 at, and over 50 years, several at over 40 years. Wow. So I'm a real firm believer in these long term quality relationships, loyalty, reciprocity, um, legacy and, and community. Mm. So I'm you know, 1954, we're coming up on our you know, 70th anniversary and we're going strong and growing by leaps and bounds. And, and, you know, hopefully we have a bright future, but, you know, looking back, I think that sort of positive impact on the community and, you know, it starts again with the employees and, and the people in our, our sphere. Um, that's, I think what I'm most proud of, you know, and that of course, alongside with the reputation, right. You know, I, I want people to look at our name and have a positive feeling that, you know, they care about their community, they care about their employees, and they're in it for the long run. So to succinctly to answer your question, I think it's uh, brand reputation for the reasons that I hmm. outlined. So maybe just describe for the listeners kind of your main core businesses. Um, you know, I, I touched upon it right at the beginning, but um, just maybe share with us kind of what's kind of the lead horse, so to speak, and what, what are some of the other uh, entities that uh, that are developing? 100%. Yeah, so the main, the foundational part, the main core business is industrial uh, real estate development and property management. We're uniquely structured in that we're vertically integrated. So we buy raw land, service it, design buildings, build them ourselves with our own construction crews and retain ownership and then manage. So everything is done in-house. It's this sort of one-stop shop hmm. structure. So that's the foundationally, that's what um, you know, what sort of the essence of the company. And then over time, we've accumulated a portfolio of about 12 million square feet of industrial space, 90% uh, of which is in, in British Columbia, um, some in Alberta. And of the British Columbia assets, I think we probably built 90% of that uh, portfolio. So we're the largest um, uh, owner and property manager of industrial space in uh, BC, uh, privately held, but we're, we're the, the largest. So that's the sort of foundational uh, aspect. We, in addition to these developments that we do for lease, we build a lot for owner users. So um, we'll take a five acre site in Burnaby, build 100,000 square feet and cut them into 10,000 square foot bays for sale. We started doing this in 2007. So this is a strata condo model that we've employed here in BC in Alberta and that's our foray into Toronto has been focused on that so that's industrial you know property management development now about 10 12 years ago we started uh, BD living which is our residential uh, division we only develop residentially here in Metro Vancouver I'm in Burnaby right now at our head office BD living is based out of downtown that entity has grown significantly in recent years we have a number of successful projects under our belt what we're really looking forward to is um, a project in Fraser Mills, uh, in Coquitlam called Fraser Mills that was recently approved. It's 5,500 units. I think it's going to take 20 years to build. So this is real sort of legacy, you know, sort of development piece where you're building like a little town. So we're relatively near the residential game, but it's become a very significant part of our business as well. And finally, we have BD Capital, which is our non-real estate investing division that's based out of downtown, you know, uh, structured structured debt debt for for you know technology companies mining companies we're we're involved in a whole range of businesses music uh, network music uh, local uh, music um, um, 
uh, I was a publisher, but now it's a more sort of copyright asset. So uh, in mining as well, we've really become active in the mining space. Uh, my friend Stephen Dean, who is CEO of Artemis Gold, we're the largest shareholder of Artemis Gold. We're under construction right now, building a very large gold mine uh, just south of Vanderhoof in central uh, BC. Uh, a few years ago, we were the lead investor in a gold mine in Nova Scotia called Atlantic Gold, which was which mm -hmm. was sold. So the main business is industrial, but that's and, and residential is catching up for you know pretty quickly in terms of active development and then some other things yeah. as well. So I just have to try to stay focused because I get yes. a little bit, you know, a little shiny object yeah, kind of yeah. over here. But I'm getting better, you know, in some yeah, respects yeah, as I get yeah. older. Excellent, excellent to hear. So you mentioned, I'll segue a little bit differently here. So you mentioned a little bit of the music side. So is that is that Sonny Bono's picture behind you? Uh, I don't know, over here? Yeah. Okay, now this is uh, Cindy and I with uh, Ronnie Venucci Jr. and Brandon Flowers from The Killers um, at one of the events. They've played a couple of events for us and they've become friends and they're fantastic people. And that's Cindy and I down below with uh, Lady Gaga at one of... Um, one of her uh, events, we got to sit on stage for Tony Bennett's 90th uh, birthday at Radio City Music Hall at Lady Gaga performed with Tony Bennett uh, a year and a half or almost two years ago now. So, um, and there's a bit of a connection there. My, my wife, Cindy, is friends with uh, Lady Gaga's mother, Cynthia. So, um, you know, we've, we've had lots of amazing experiences and uh, memories at various concerts over the years. And music's a huge part of uh, my life and our lives. Oh, fantastic. Um, the uh, So, you know, with such a multifaceted uh, set of business lines, you know, family life, everything, what would you say uh, the top two or three things that are bringing you the most enjoyment today at this stage in your life? Wow. Um, that is a phenomenal question. Um, my first answer to that uh just you know what comes yep. to mind yeah. is is um you know there's the flexibility right i you know i work i still work pretty hard but uh, i've got no qualms about flying off somewhere on a thursday and taking the weekend off i'm away most weekends i really enjoy you know i go to vegas a lot i've got a daughter in la we have a house in whistler like i'm i gotta keep sort of moving around and having that flexibility of uh, uh and the ability to, to travel I, I get a lot of joy out of that i really uh, one of my happiest places is being on the plane and you know having a water or a glass of wine and reading my papers and not being bothered my phone i can't make a phone call you know <laughs> um i just I, I i love that um and you know i love what we do right i i going to a site you know we're just finishing our biggest project ever it's it's actually wrapping up next week um, it's in South Burnaby. It's a million square feet, multi-level for Amazon. It's probably Amazon's like most expensive building per square foot in North America, given what the land cost was and the nature of the build itself. But, you know, for me to go to a, a property like that and you look around and think, okay, there's how many hundreds of people working on the site? And that doesn't get old, right? That, that, that feeling, uh, I sit there, as soon as I pause and I just let it kind of sink in and savor it. Because oh. I feel so, so fortunate to, to um, you know, be sort of head of an organization that's doing some incredible things uh, like that. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's a bit of pressure. People are relying on you and have you. But I, I love, I love what we do. It's, it's tangible. It's um, long-term. It's legacy. So, you know, the flexibility of my schedule and the work that we uh, do, two things come to mind. But philanthropically, uh you know, philanthropy is becoming more and more sort of important uh, to me as I you know get uh, older, and it's an area that will have continued investment. We just uh, last week uh, brought in the fifth cohort of our BD Luminary students. So, you know, I got to go to my junior high school in Mosgrop, which is now a eight to twelve, but it was eight to ten when I went, and I got to walk into my grade ten by flu grade ten homeroom class and tell three students in person that they are uh, joining the next cohort of BD luminaries. And of course they're completely shocked, but to be able to do that, to be able to, to positively affect someone else's life, it's just, it's, it's amazing. I'm very grateful for it. And I take a ton of joy in being able to, 
to do that. So those are some of the things that mm-hmm. really drive me um, and will continue to drive me and inspire me because it's such a great feeling. Okay, well, we want more of that. How can we do more of that? Well, we can try to be more successful and then invest back further in the community. Very well said. So how would how would your wife, Cindy, describe you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I did tell you over lunch, I was going to yeah. ask you that question. <laughs> yeah, I think you said, uh, you know, what would she say about you? I asked her last night. She's like, you keep asking me. I said, well, I forgot to write it down or, you know, I got to catch at the right <laughs> moment after a couple of drinks. And then the answer got a little bit better. So I said, well, you know, if anyone wants to know, what would you say about me? So just a few things. I think, um, you know, she said that I was, uh, that I'm, I'm a kind uh, giving person that I'm a, a good listener that sometimes when things don't seem like they're going to be okay by talking, I make her feel like, you know, things are going to be okay. Um, she thinks I'm smart and a bit quirky. Uh, she loves my quirkiness, but I have some, uh, some odd or quirky traits that she says. Um, I know that, you know, back in the day, we've been together for a long time. I uh, wasn't the best dresser. So I think she'll take credit for some of my <laughs> dressing habits. Um, and uh, also that uh, that I'm lucky to have her. So, you know, she threw that kind of into the yeah, she, there, had a few, she had a few things to say, but I, I'm sure she could cover her own podcast just yeah. talking to me. But, yeah. You know, one thing is, and the final thing I think is that she says she's never bored, right? That I have a lot to say and she's a, really good listener and um she you know we'll go out for dinner she says she's never bored there's there's no shortage of things i think maybe she'd prefer if i stay on topic because i can change gears rather quickly but uh, she's never bored and that's a good thing that's a very good thing for relationships so i think it's probably one of your biggest blessings right there um so tell me tell me about your relationship with your father and kind of you know obviously a you know icon in in the vancouver area um just kind of things that you learned you know at the dinner table and just through your career uh thus far it's um it's a great uh sort of great topic to to cover because uh, he passed away in 2017 but i feel like i think about him more and more and the you know the values that he instilled in me at a very young age i can still hear him saying these things to me they're just dr- drilled into you in, in a positive way not in a negative way but at, at a young age and how those those traits and those values that he impressed upon me um have i think been a fundamental part of the success of, of our business and and for me personally like in my relationships uh 100 so um he you know he i've never lied to him not once he said ryan if you tell me something I need to be able to take it to the bank 100%. If you're not sure, just say you're not sure. There's no harm in that. Don't tell me something. So I'm always really careful. When I tell someone something with certainty, it's like, I've got to be 100% or I'll you know couch it appropriately. Yep. So, um, you know, be honest. He's like, just do what you say you're going to do. Follow through. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. You have mm. to be reliable. You have to have people have to count on what you say you know, your word is your bond, cliche like that, but cliches are often true. And this is how he conducted, um, you know, himself and and his life. And that's, you know, he's such a huge figure. We quite frankly, growing up, I was quite afraid of him. Like I never once talked back to him. Like the way, you know, some of my kids talk to me sometimes I'm going, I've never, I'm afraid of my dad and he's been dead for six years. I just think of him looking at me like, he didn't have to hit me. He just looked at me like, okay, I had massive respect for him. But he's a very principled person, and you know, I I, I ref- often reflect, you know, you know, on what we've done to date and how some of those key, you know, attributes, the things that he stressed, um, you know, when I'm six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, uh, have brought us to to this place. Wow. What about your mother? What sort of impact? We just had Mother's Day recently, and so what sort of impact has she had on your life so far? Yeah, it, it, it's uh, a great, great question. I was thinking about my mom's 89. I just, so her birthday was on the 9th. I saw her and of course, uh, Mother's Day and she's uh, she's mentally still with it. She's got some physical uh, challenges, but my mom, um, I got maybe some of my, uh, some some of my softer attributes you know, from, from her. Um, she's a very loving, doting, like I was a mama's boy for sure. Uh, I probably wasn't disciplined enough when even when I was a little, 
that she she was <laughs> maybe a bit bit too nice to me. But um, my, my you know compassionate, empathetic side. They also came from my dad for sure. But I think I got a lot of that uh, from my mom. I always felt uh, a lot of love and nurturing, and I knew that you know she had my back. If something were to happen, like I got in trouble at school, she'd be my fiercest defender. She'd show up and you know, have it out with the principal or something. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I deserve maybe a bit a discipline, <laughs> I think maybe she could have maybe found some more flaws in me. She thinks I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. Yeah. Like keep me in line. There could have been some more boundaries, but um, you know, it came from the right place. She's uh, uh, I was over there the other day and she's showing me baby pictures. Oh, look how cute you are. And you know, I'm her only child. So a lot of her focus is on me. And um, I, I, the combination of the two of them, uh, you know, I, I, I look at both of them and I try to sort of cherry pick or just pick what are the best attributes of each and, and try to you know, try again. It, it's life is aspirational to, right. to embody the best uh, out of both of them. Um, yeah. Hopefully I can try to continue to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you want? What do you want for your kids to learn from you and from Cindy, your wife? Yeah. Um, you know, my kids are now you know, all in their 20s. My son will be 29 uh, in a few weeks. So, um, you know, we've tried to instill in them the, those same same values and, and, you know, how to treat people, right? That, mm. you know, my dad, whether it's whoever it is around you, it doesn't matter if you've got this much money or this, that. You treat everybody the same. You treat them with respect. You're no better than someone because you're rich or whatever. Like, that none of that nonsense. My 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 grandfather on one side was a, you know, a bus driver. My grandma was a uh, maid. Like it's we we have working class roots, and we don't look. We we treat everyone the same. Mm -hmm. And I want my kids to to be that and and to be humble and be um, uh, modestly grateful for you know the the good fortune that's been bestowed upon me and and by extension upon them. And I think that is something uh, that is something we all need to sort of remind ourselves. And I don't, I don't try to make them feel guilty. That's not the the approach, but just little reminders here and there, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that gratitude. And I think they get it. I think they, I think they do. But it's like anything—a work mm -hmm. in progress. So excellent. So at this point in your career, so how how would you answer the question of uh, how wealth has? affected you or provided to you at this point in your life is it freedom to kind of move and and travel and give like what would you say would be the things that uh, wealth is kind of bringing to you at this point yeah it's opened up so many opportunities to really um to be fulfilled in in life right to 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 be philanthropic, to be in a position where you can contribute back to your community and touch people's lives is absolutely wonderful. So that's that's the mm -hmm. first thing, 100%. The uh, flexibility and freedom to go wherever you, you want to go and do it, what, you know, wherever you want to go see, you know, Bruce Springsteen in New York on April 1st, you're going, right? Like it, it's, and I don't, you know, I know, like I remind myself, I'm going, how lucky are you? I have conversations with myself and it's a bit strange. I, I often have moments and um, again, that, that gratitude piece, but the, the freedom to travel, the freedom to move, but the um, ability to grow the business, right? Having the success we've yep. had. Okay, we love to build. We think, you know, we're, we're good at it. We've got a lot to learn still, but we have a lot of people that you know, work here that worked here for a long time. They're relying on me and the team to continue mm -hmm. uh, to, to, uh, you know, nurture the business and hopefully grow it. And then they're relying uh, on, on us. So um, having had the success or the wealth that we do allows us to, for instance, expand into Toronto. We've been eyeing that market for 20 years. Yep. It was only about four or five years ago. We go, okay. Now's the right time. We've had some early success. That's great. But, wow, you take a helicopter trip around Greater Toronto and you're like, this is, and I've been there a lot of times, but yeah. to see it from that perspective, it's, you know, our market times like eight or something. And I just right. see opportunity. I get excited. Like, okay, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. So it sort of feeds um, on each other. Uh, but yeah. it, it's, yeah. it, it's uh, there's a lot of, it, it's like you say, it's freedom, but it's opportunity to pursue the things in life from a business perspective and from a personal perspective that are fulfilling. Hmm. 
So this is uh, where I always call the Oprah moment of the interview, and that is um, challenges in your life. Uh, and, you know, I realize this is a podcast, so, um, but maybe some lessons learned, things, challenges that you've gone through that not a lot of people would know about you necessarily. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, I've, life's been really good so far, but there have been a few bumps along the way for sure. Um, you know, just trying to keep your ego in check it's not a issue now and i don't know that it ever was an issue but you know in my 30s you know you start to make a bit of money you're looking pretty good you're kind of out and about and you know you can start thinking that you're you're pretty pretty hot shit. and yep. i wasn't too bad in that regard but you know it was um i use the analogy like a, a lightsaber like in star wars yep you, you got this maybe this a bit of power for lack of a better word i don't mean that in, in a yeah political sense but it's power and you got to get a handle on it before it gets a handle on you right you got to get control of it and i think there was a time 10 or 15 years ago where i think it was maybe controlling me a little bit and as i've gotten older i've I had a, a lot of experience and then just you know um learned some things hmm. along the way and just yep. kind of just just well said get things in check and again just I, I always, you know, I try to think, you know, long term, right? Like, what's what's the what's in the long term interest of of me, the family, but the company and the and the stakeholders, and in terms of like lessons learned, it's, it's always been foremost in my mind. But now more than ever, it's a key focus. Um, is that sort of future, uh, future looking thing? But and you know, there have been um, uh, one time we went to court seventeen years ago. I was supporting a partner of ours. In a venture that didn't go the right way it was a very public court case and it was really difficult i mean being on the stand and having someone drilling questions at you for like weeks on end it was just exhausting going can this just end like <laughs> I, I said well, I, I promise uh i'm not a religious person but i was promising you know something in the sky <laughs> like i promise i will be so happy when this is done i won't complain about anything ever again right <laughs> so you know legal action we try to minimize that um you know, sometimes it's necessary, but yeah. just that those negative influences in your life in terms of lessons learned, I really um, invest in relationships and the importance of relationships. And I feel so grateful. I've got so many friends that I can count on when think, and that's another thing, you know, in terms of lessons learned and some of the challenges in your life, surrounding yourself with such a, a great network of friends who can be there to support you and continue to in, invest in those. Mm -hmm. I'm reading a book right now based on the Harvard study. It's called The Good Life. And it just stresses the point that your long-term happiness is tied to the quality and and strength of your relationships. And that's mm -hmm. something that, you know, I really got wise to, I think maybe about 10 years ago or so, 15 years ago. And the people in my life that matter, I'll do anything for them, right? And, and you know, I've had people that have worked with us and they've you know gone on to do their own thing they've left here yep great i want them to be successful there's no yep. person they didn't steal from me or anything okay leave forget the ego leave the ego at the door they're going to go do that thing how can i help make them be successful i'm really yep. proud of those relationships and some of them uh that are stronger than ever after 30 years and it's but it takes commitment right it takes um effort and you got to invest in it but i'm a big believer that it pays back in spades we're just going to take a quick pause there from our interview with Ryan Beatty. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Want to know how Canada's top entrepreneurs think about creating significant wealth? Join me, Thane Stenner, founder of Stenner Wealth Partners at CG Wealth Management and host of the Smart Wealth Podcast. Download today at iHeartRadio or your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe now. After a quick break, let's jump back into the interview with Ryan Beatty. So, Ryan, when it comes to kind of lessons, more lessons learned in life, maybe share a couple more that come to mind. Yeah, you know, uh, when I look back to when I was maybe 25 or 30, I, I was much more rigid than I am now. It's like I go away on a trip with friends. Okay, dinner's at this time. We're doing this at this time. As I've gotten older, I'm much more mm. free-flowing. Oh. Mm. Um, that uh, I'm a big believer in optionality, like... I have a tolerance for ambiguity that would drive most people crazy. Like, you know, I've got trips booked that I cancel the day before or multiple reservations. I cancel everything on time, mind you, but 
you know, my assistant understands, like, don't cancel anything until you have to. You never know. Optionality has is so undervalued by people. And I'm all about optionality, flexibility, making a decision when you need to make a decision. Like, someone's like, okay, I need a decision on that. Well, do you? You don't need it. And a lot of people are linear in their thinking, their, their mind. They need this off their list of things to do. And so I respect that. But, you know, more information may come before we have to make said decision. So yes. I have, I've, over the last 20 years, I am much more flexible, um, much more um, you know, free flowing and, and open and less rigid than I was you know, hmm. before. And I look back at old me going, dude, like you could have been a bit, <laughs> but, no. And, and over time, it's like, no, you know, you, you learn. And again, I've got a, a really good friend of mine, John O'Neill. I was like, he, for my 40th birthday, he, he bought us a horse, which we had for years. It was called Options Baby. And, you know, I think I learned a lot of this. <laughs> From them and you know that applies to business as well just you know optionality flexibility uh, without being flaked don't get me wrong it's not like i'm going to a dinner party go get a better invite i'm going to go something else no once you make a commitment you got to follow through but in general having yep. a flexible mind and being open to uh open to other experiences saying yes to things that comes up say yes and who knows what doors that's open. been open and you know i think back to you know, even my good friend, Stephen Dean, who's uh, CEO of Artemis Gold, and uh, we've been really, he's the one who got me into YPO, actually. Stephen got me into YPO mm. in 2002. Mm. Our kids were uh, in kindergarten together, and I had the chance to go to a, a golf event or a party at his house. Well, I'm glad I went to the party at his house, because then I met him, got to know him. He kind of took me under his wing. Stephen is eight years older than me. Uh, I like to remind them, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, good things happen when you show up. So, and being open uh, to people, new experience and uh, yeah. So, so it's, it's kind of fun. That's why you get older, you know, some, in some respects it gets a little better because you can draw upon uh, the experiences you've had in your life. Mm -hmm. So I think over lunch, you kind of mentioned something around uh Sonny Bono uh, connection. So maybe just share that for the, Listener. It's not Sonny Bono. Sonny, you're, you're dating yourself. Sorry. What sorry. Is that? Oh, man. I, did, I blew that one. Yeah. Sonny sorry. and Cher? Like, what? <laughs> Way off. We'll, we'll edit that one out. <laughs> That's, yeah. Control, alt, delete. That's okay. This is when I get my water. Um, You can, why you re, I'll let you rephrase the question. How's that? If you can want to rephrase it. Um, hmm, let's see. Uh, okay. So you you have a connection with Bono, and maybe explain that connection. For, just is, I think it's intriguing. It's yeah. You know what? I've I've had the good fortune of uh, meeting him uh, several times. I've been a massive U two fan since 1980 when Boy came out. I was in grade seven. Uh, I've been a fan all these years. I've seen him so many times in concert. But uh, he's been a, a you know big influence in my life when I, I look at him and how successful he's has been but how humble he's been and the impact mm. he, um uh, you know he he just has done so much for the for the world right certain you know, serving the world in, in service to the world you want to be useful like you said you want to be useful so i, I look mm. at a lot of the things that he said and some of the lyrics too that he's written and how they've actually impacted my life and some decisions i've made uh, you know along the way so hmm. it's a great you know um inspiring figure for me to look to on how to be a successful yet decent person that really um you know invest time and energy in the help of others hmm. and uh he's been a big influence uh, that way and uh, continues to be um to this day and and as a result uh, of that, you know, we became involved with the one campaign, maybe eight or so years ago. Bono is the co-founder of one. It's based in the U.S., but it's around the world. It's an advocacy organization that uh, really encourages governments to invest in you know, in foreign investment uh, in countries helping lift people out of poverty. It's not handout stuff. How can we, you know, invest government funds in these countries to make lives better? for mm -hmm. those around the world, eliminating extreme poverty, you know, get, getting rid of the scourge of, of AIDS and malaria and things like that. So uh, the impact, uh, and, and Bono was recently celebrated, uh, you know, for this when George Bush um, Jr. was you know, president, 
And you know, they made the U.S. made the biggest investment in uh, the AIDS medication ever, and the, the number of lives that, that people that are alive today because of it is it's not, it's ten to twenty million people. Well, Bono is who led that initiative, right? So, hmm. um, and as I get older, I think he's even more of a figure that I want to um, you know learn from and uh, hmm. and you know follow in the footsteps of for lack of a better word you know yeah. it's an insp- he's an inspirational figure for me uh, one of five in my life i think um that have impacted uh me. excellent so it sounds like your dad clearly was one of those inspirational figures uh so so who might the other two or three be yeah you know and i just throw the number five I, you know yeah. number, number one is my my dad uh number two i think would be uh you know joe siegel uh locally um yeah, and I know you knew Joe yep, uh, yep. Really well, and just the the, the the time with Joe and his, you know those nuggets of wisdom, and you know some of the, the messaging. It's like, you know, he, a lot of these different proverbs and things that he would quote. But yep. you know, he, uh, he uh, helped really shape my thinking uh, around philanthropy. Mm. Uh, always, you know, had tremendous respect for sort of my elders and maybe it's because my dad was like 42 and he had me which was kind of old at the time but so i've always been comfortable with with listening to the advice of older uh man mm-hmm. which joe mm-hmm. joe is one but yep. uh, for sure uh you know joe and the helped i think with the you know lead up to the bd school of business and you know when before i turned 50 i had a plan in place for luminaries and joe and i read lunch he goes well ryan you know you're, you're turning 50 like maybe you should do like 50 million dollars i said joe actually it's already in motion, but thank you so much. And it's, you know, in large part because of you and that thinking that has led to this. So um, I felt I was pretty happy that I'd already jumped on it, but great that he was sort of thinking along the same lines as I was and what a, what a brilliant person he was. So he continues to, to I think about him and, you know, what would Joe do? What would Joe say? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Peter yeah. Brown, uh, locally, mm-hmm. Peter has become a very, a very good friend. I just talked to him on the phone yesterday. He's 81 now i guess and, and uh, he's had a few health challenges but he keeps going and what a yep. what a, an amazing canadian again uh, really cares about public policy as i do how can we um you know make canada a more uh, prosperous nation to help all of its citizens i mean at the end of the day that's you know, we all kind of want the same thing how do we make this a better stronger country peter's a big advocate uh, for that big involved in the local community. I was yep. involved in the micro police foundation with him. I was on, on the board and uh, he, he spearheaded the launch of the cadets program, which a lot of inner city youth participated in. I think actually mm-hmm. that was, you know, subconsciously that may have been the forerunner or one of the um, inspirations for our luminaries program just to, mm-hmm. to see that. So Peter uh, it's been amazing, a dear friend and a big inspiration. So I've been very mm-hmm. fortunate to, to uh, learn from some of the best. Excellent. Well, I, I've met Peter a number of times as well, and I don't know him like you do, but uh, I've got to know uh, his son or one of his sons, uh, Jamie, because uh, obviously he's a he's uh, the head of the investment bank, banking group for, uh, here at Canaccord Genuity. So, um, so a couple final questions uh, to do, and because you know the the thesis of this particular podcast is around wealth creation and 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 learning along the way from some top minds so a specific question for you actually it's a two-parter what's been your best investment so far and what's been your worst investment so far oh that's okay um <laughs> I you could take them you could take them whichever way i'm gonna do the worst one first and, I, yeah. and when i say me, you're you're saying you're referring to the company, right? The macro, in terms of BD, right? It's is it a broad? Uh, thing? All actually, the investment yeah. I do is everything is through the companies. So I don't. Yeah. Do so, so that's personal. that's that's fair. I guess what I'd say is, what impacted you the most in your thinking? It, it, obviously, it could be through the company, but and it would be likely, but yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, and there's a several we can go through, but um, uh. And I don't. I'm not trying to um, deflect this at all, so I can answer another negative one. I'm sure once I answer this one. But um, my dad, when he turned 80, uh, I introduced him just prior to that to one of his favorite actresses on TV. He loved science fiction shows, and I introduced him to someone who was on TV that he was a big fan of. And 
she, along with others, convinced him to invest in a TV show. And, you know, I was never in favor of this. I thought it was a bit crazy, but who am I to tell him that he can't do this? Like, go ahead. Well, you do a season, you lose a bunch of money, but then it's like, well, if you get three seasons done, then you're in syndication. Then if you, so you get on this treadmill, finally, yeah. after three seasons, we put an end to it. But we lost, I think it was the biggest budget Canadian produced TV series ever. We lost a lot of money on this. And, you know, and that's terrible. But at the same time, uh, at least early on, it brought you know joy to him, and he got excited. He liked it, and he was in his eighties, and so, you know, there was some value to it. But from a financial standpoint, it was a big loser. So you know, we're we're uh, not interested in being involved with television or movies, <laughs> or things like that. So, yes, yes, yeah, um, and you know, through um, an associate who used to work with us, we, like I mentioned earlier, on the the capital side, we do. You know, lending and you know uh, uh structured debt that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, we had a loan to uh, a car a series of a car dealership um a set series of car dealerships in california and uh the owner of that business you know uh, fraud you know he modified the financial statements it was a complete fraud the, uh, the cia is involved now and and so our investment in that was completely written off and we lost you know a lot of money Mm -hmm. there uh, based on due to a fraud so you know when we and i'm excited about our bd capital division but in the past you know by far consistently the most success we've uh, had is in the industrial real estate yeah. space that we know uh the best that we're i won't say we're experts at it because believe me we've excited a meeting the other day we make mistakes i think have we ever built a building before but you know <laughs> that's also part of the challenges you always yep. want to learn um but the, you know the, the the best has always been uh, industrial development here in Vancouver, buying raw land. You know, you, we have an in-house um, engineering you know, team, so we service the raw raw land. Yep. Just the integrated structure. I don't think anyone can actually um, compete exactly with what we do. So our, our model that you know we've been able to scale successfully over the last twenty years has uh, been resilient over time. So, uh, so, so the answer that the best investment is one of several um and pieces of industrial land that we bought that we've developed and that we have tenants that are they've been there for 20 years and we bought the land at a relatively low number way back in the day so um it's more of a broad answer yeah. gotcha okay good uh so last last two questions because i want to be respectful of your time so um what's maybe one or two things about you that um just a lot of people just most people, even some of your closest friends might not be aware of. You know, it's a tough one because I think my close friends know you pretty know well, me really well. I, I don't, you know, I'm really transparent too. Like when I talk to my friend, I'm really open. I, even with people I don't know that well, I don't kind of keep a lot hidden because I don't know how you build trust and intimacy with someone unless you just tell them how it is. And yep. again, strip away the ego. And if I screw up on something or I made a mistake, uh, I have no qualms saying that. And that also comes from my dad too. Like you, you don't it. If someone, if he screwed up, yeah, that's on me. I made a mistake or change your mind when new information comes along, right? It, like strip the ego out. If someone comes along and I had an idea and someone's got a better idea, take the better idea, right? Yep. Those are some of the things I learned from him, but I'm very transparent. My friends know uh, lots of things, but you know, we meet um, new employees and we go around and tell people what are the different things that people might not know about you. One of them would, for me would be that I'm, I've always been really good at Wheel of Fortune, um, I, and and I play a lot of word games now. Wordle, Quirtle, Octurtle. I compete with my in-house counsel and my wife every day on in these games. I have a knack for seeing patterns of letters and coming up with words. I've always been really good at that, and that's that's hmm. kind of fun and kind of quirky. Um, I'm pretty good at some indoor sports. I'm not a uh, I'm not great outdoor other than baseball, and I'm decent at golf now, but. Uh, I'm not so good at soccer, some of the basketball. I'm not good at those uh, outdoor sports, but I'm pretty good at pool. And uh, I've played a lot my whole life. And then since COVID, we've played a lot more uh, in our downtown office. And mm -hmm. you might not be aware of it. I'll send it to you after. But I just last month in uh, April um, uh, got the world record for number of potted stripes off a break. So I was playing downtown and we've, we have cameras installed because we have controversial you know, decisions like controversial <laughs> calls. What ball was it? So we put four cameras in uh, during COVID, like in middle of 2020. And the cameras have been great because if I have a good shot, we you know, record it. 
but I went up and I said, okay, Rob, Rob for your venture. And I play every, almost every day around five o'clock. I went, I broke and I went, holy smokes. Like it was like, what just happened? Rob walked by, I said, did you sink four? I said, I think I sunk six. And I went right to Darren Bradston, who does, he's the eye in the sky. He does the uh, <laughs> video global, actually global news did a story in this last, last week. And so we applied and uh, got the, the world record for six of one suit uh, sunk off a break Guinness uh, world record. So that's, going to be great dinner party conversation when i'm meeting someone new do you know i'm in the guinness book of world records if, if i'm still am at that point i don't know i'm sure there's people at home trying it uh, right now but of course 99.99 percent of pool games aren't recorded so you know i'm sure someone's done better but they can't prove it we have uh, irrefutable video evidence and witnesses so i'm good at pool and i'm a pretty good bowler so things you know that, that you spent time on when you're 8 9 10 11 12 years old uh, it's amazing how it carries through uh, mm -hmm. the rest of your life. So mm, interesting, very interesting. Not too bad at indoor sports. Not so good at uh, yeah. outdoor sports. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, yeah. listen, uh, I, I again, I'm super appreciative, as I'm sure our listeners will be when this is released on the BNM Bloomberg uh, uh, network. Um, you said in, you had two questions. That was only one. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. But I here, so here's here's the. I've got more time. I thought okay. I, I had this down for. I had it down until 12.30, so okay. you, know, you can edit out whatever you want. Okay, or, okay. So, okay. well, okay, fair enough. Uh, so the, I guess one of the things I was going to try to finish on is any last bit of insights or tidbits that you'd, okay, here's the question. Here's the question. If today was your last day on the planet, Brian, what would you want to share with what would be the tidbits you'd want to share with your family and BD? Because those are, that's a legacy. What would, what would, yeah. Uh, and take your time because this yeah, is a, I, this I, a big I, question. I've got a few things that come to mind and, and it's a bit all over the place. And, and of course, some are more personal than others, but you know, for, for the people in the company and for my kids, like be guided by you know these values, think long-term, and reputationally, don't think about the quick buck here or do this. You know, we're involved in, again, the, some of the mining stuff. And, you know, we've got a long-term time rise. We're making an investment. We're going to build this. Like, sometimes people in that sector, as you just yeah. know, and this is a yeah. criticism, just the nature of it. I think sometimes yeah. people more transactional. That's not how we think. And maybe that's why we had a bit of success. I don't know. But we try to think long-term. How Every decision I make is, how does this affect how the company is viewed? Because I want more than anything for people to see our name and go, we can count on them. They're reliable. They, they do what they say they're mm -hmm. going to do. We want to be that sort of pillar. So I'd be telling the people at BD and my family, just continue to invest in, in reputation. And it just like keep thinking, you know, 10, 20, 30 years out, not just you know, the quick buck, you know, here or there. Um, I want my, my kids and the people in the company to be, uh, you know, less risk averse. So people, be it a manager, they, if they make a decision that goes bad, they get in trouble. If they make a decision that goes well, they get maybe a bit of credit. People don't want to get in trouble because they worry they're going to get fired. Yeah. No, I want to give them license to go. If you think that this is the right decision for the company, make it. And if it doesn't turn out, if as long as the thinking was sound, I'm happy. It doesn't matter yeah. if we, you got the freedom to make those mistakes. Again, it's not there's a typical, I play a lot of blackjack in Vegas, right? And it's amazing what I've learned from that. You know, when you sit down with someone and, and, and let's say I, let, let's say it's like the, the dealer's got a six and I've, you know, the person beside me has got 14 and they should stay, but they hit. Okay. Well, then someone down the way is like, oh, look, they didn't play by the book and they, the, the cards don't know the rules. These are independent events. So someone is apt to blame someone when they make a non-book decision, but they won't give them credit when that same non-book decision helps their hand. The hmm. chances are both of the same, right? Hmm. These are independent events. So we have a tendency to cast blame or lay blame. We don't give credit where it's due. So I, I really want to encourage people to take a bit more risk as long as they're measured and long as they're well thought out how would they do this if this it was their business? Because I think looking back and it's sort of an answer to one of the questions you had before, but maybe some decisions on investments. I'm more upset about deals we didn't do versus deals that we did do. If I look back and go, wow, I was a bit too cautious there, a bit too cautious. Like, why wouldn't we have done that? 
what's the downside? Can you handle the downside? Yeah, let's go. So if I look back and have a criticism of myself is that, you know, not so much lately, but maybe 10 or 20 years ago, maybe a bit too risk averse. And and that's mm. the, which is contrary. When you get older, you're supposed to be more risk averse. I'm not, we're going the other other way. Direction, yeah. um, and I want to impart that on uh, our employees and, you know, and, and my kids. So those those are some of the, the key kind of macro mm. messaging that, that mm. we want to uh, deliver and, mm. and, and keep building. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are relying on us, not only the employees, but stakeholders, the community itself. Like we've done a lot philanthropically so far. I'm very proud of that. In my mind, it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? It's just the beginning. I'm very, I've, I've got lots of ideas in that realm, a lot of aspirations, and there's mm. a lot more we can do. And that is part of what drives me day to day and all the stuff we can do because we're building for that, you know, building for the for the future and the opportunities that that are going to mm. come and the things we can do uh, mm. to help because we owe it to this community that's uh, been, you know, critical to the yep. success we've had. I, I think it's the right thing to do to invest yep. back into it as a, as a thank you. And we're, we're going to do more. So you've been, you've been extensively involved with YPO, right? Over the years. Uh, and I've been involved on the tiger 21 side of things, just from a learning from other, other successful people. So uh, maybe just without it being an infomercial for uh, YPO, but basically just talk about how helpful that was to you in your career. Yeah, massive. I mean, there's no question. I would not be standing here talking to you right now if it wasn't for my YPO experience in particular. And this is something I know you can relate to very well is yep. my my forum. My YPO forum group started in 2002 and was together for like 20 years. And the the bonds you create, the, the connection, um, uh, you know, contrary to some of the rules, I've invested a lot with uh, my YPO f- forum mates, and boy, I've learned so much. Again, I'm the youngest, was the youngest in the group, mm. so I get to sort of take. I add up like the years. Uh, uh, they are older than me. You add it up and think of that collective wisdom that you get, you know, from that, and uh, have been really supportive uh, of me, and encouraging of me, and and having that you know, that forum uh, to to share. Uh, life experience with has been massive and along with a lot of really good friends I've met through YPO and the mm-hmm. same sort of idea and these different almost little mini forms we've created so it's allowed me I've become a better communicator a better listener a better friend and a better person and a better leader as a result of mm-hmm. uh, of all these people and I'm I'm very grateful uh, for that and I'll be uh, I've got there's an event coming up June 1st that I'm uh getting a, an award and I'm going to you know, be stressing that sort of message to, to those who uh, help put me uh, in this place uh, where I am today. I'm very grateful for all of them. Hmm. Excellent. So I do have two final questions. Um, what's been the most interesting person you've met so far in your life? Wow. Cause you, I mean, I could tell you're very highly visual. You got photos in the background. You've got things that are impacting you visually, and you've seen and done a lot of things so far in your life. But yeah, who who might be that person that was like, "Wow, I was not expecting that," or just rocked you from a point of view of blew your brain a bit. That's um, that's a great question um i would have to not to repeat myself but probably would have to be bono because you know when you see someone from afar you see this performer and singer songwriter all that you 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 create an impression like oh but that's that's not who they are it's what they do right and then you you meet someone and um and not that I know him well at all. I'm not. I'm not overstating the the, the relationship. But I, I've you know met him a few times at various events, and I've just completely struck by how uh, he conducted himself, you know, around other people, and how immensely respectful he was of, of other people, and um, and and the modesty and the the, the um, curiousness and the, and the brain and the inquisitiveness and the desire to learn and to do more. It's like, wow, hmm. that's 
pretty impressive. And again, someone not resting on their laurels, like the other way, like, okay, what's, what's more like so driven in the work ethic of these people, like watching how hard they work when they don't need to, but they, they do need to like within them. It's, it's within them. I, I think, um, uh, just an incredible, um, incredible person in how, uh, he treats other, other people. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so last question, I promise this will be a fun one. I think, uh, this podcast is going to be published in first week of June. And I think it's somebody's birthday. Yes, Cindy's so, birthday. She so, turns 55 on June 7th. So what do you want to say to her? That's uh, that's amazing. Um, well, I didn't think I'd have this, you know, forum and this. this I know, I know. I like that. It's, I, it's I, perfect. You speak from the heart. So um, a happy 55th birthday, uh, Cindy. I love you. I've known you since I was 17 years old. And we've been, you know, I'm grateful for our, 31 year marriage, you're an incredible partner, wonderful wife, uh, inspirational mother. Um, thank you for your patience and kindness and putting up with my many, uh, uh, I'm sure irritating qualities, but uh, celebrating my good ones as well. It's wonderful to have you as a, a champion and as uh, someone who's encouraged me and I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for you. Happy birthday. Wow. That's fantastic, Ryan. I uh, hope she gets the chance to listen to this because I think that was a very good way to finish this podcast. So uh, thank you once again. So that was Ryan Beatty, who just last week on June 1st received the Canadian Chamber of Commerce Business Leader of the Year Award. Well done, Ryan. And congratulations once again. Our next podcast is with Danielle Saputo uh, in the month of July. So that'll be a very good uh, session to listen into. So please download the Smart Wealth being in Bloomberg Brand Studio podcast anywhere that you listen to on your podcast. If you'd like to learn more about Stenner Wealth Partners of CG Wealth Management, please go to StennerWealthPartners.com. Find out a lot more about what we do and about uh, our services and offerings. Have a great day, everybody. Thane Stenner, signing off. The comments expressed in this podcast are the results of work done by Stenner Wealth Partners. They may differ from the opinion of Canaccord Genuity Corp. and should not be considered as representative of Canaccord's beliefs, opinions, or recommendations. All views expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and do not constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities. The statements expressed herein are not intended to provide tax, legal, or financial advice, and under no circumstances should be construed as a solicitation to act as a securities broker or dealer in any jurisdiction. All views are intended for general circulation only and do not have any regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or general needs of any particular person, organization, or institution. Can Accord is a member of the CIPF.